Hey everyone, we have learned about reflection, we have learned about refraction, we have talked about this application, but you know what, we never got a chance to delve into the applications properly and that's why we are here today. We are here to talk about telescopes and you know what, it has a very interesting history. So let's talk about the history of telescopes. Let's start and you know what, let there be light. So let's see, we all know Galileo Galilei, most famous for the legendary Pisa experiment, although it's a legend, but we all know him for that, you know. But you know what? In 1633, he was sentenced to prison. Now, you know what? If you ask me why, I would tell you, but maybe, maybe we won't believe. You know what? He was sentenced to prison because he said, Earth is not the center of the universe. Can something so simple send someone to prison? It did. But, Question is, how was he able to say that? I mean, there were a lot of people. What did he have so that he can say, Earth is not the center, it's Sun. He believed in Copernicus's model. But what did he have? He had an instrument. The instrument is what we called as spy glasses. And today we call it as telescope. Yes, he had a telescope. He used to work on telescopes. He built a telescope. And you know what? Telescopes were there before him also. It was... Hans Lippershey, he made a telescope in 1608 and he observed that if he has two lenses and he combines those two lenses, made arrangement after those two lenses, he can actually see far objects closer to him. Nice. It's a good observation, right? If you have two lenses and you have some object which is very far from you and you arrange these two lenses, you can see that object nearer to you. And that's what we need, right? To see far objects closer to you. That's what we require. Nice. So this was the first basic telescope. And Hans Lippers Hey worked on it. Nice. So, what happened? The first lens, and we all know it's a convex lens. We know it, right? So, the first convex lens, its job was to create an inverted image of the far off object. Nice. The next lens used this image and made it bigger. And that's where this second lens came into picture. And that was the use of it. All right. So, Lippers telescope was quite good. Nice, simple. But you know what? He created a case for it. Right. And we called it the Dutch perspective glass afterwards. So, that's how he made this telescope. He created an encasing out of it. And you might have seen in a lot of movies. They come across with this telescope kind of thing, no? Yes, that was the Lippers Hay telescope. All right, but Galileo modified this design. He said, it's okay, but let's do better. Let's use this telescope, make some changes and create a more powerful telescope. So what he did, he made changes and created a telescope which was able to give you images of stars far off objects, different planets and moons of Jupiters. He saw all that with the telescope he made. Pretty impressive, no? Yes. But you know what? There was one major drawback. So whenever we talk about telescopes, there is one problem. The problem is all these telescopes have lenses. Now, what is the problem if you have lenses? These telescopes are built to see very far off objects. Now, they'll use lenses which are much thicker very strong. Now, refraction happens in a lens. But there is one slightly bit of a problem. It is, white light is not just a single color. White light is a composition of seven colors, seven spectrums which have different, different colors, right? So, the problem is, each of these different colors have different bending, different refraction. We have learned about this, right? So, when they bend differently, they will converge differently. They will start converging at different, different points. And that is one problem. And that is why Galileo's telescope had this slightly bit of a problem. We call it chromatic aberration. You start seeing these hazy colors around the object you are trying to see. And that is what Galileo was struggling with. So how to overcome that? We should, no? Because it's okay. This instrument made you reach at one level, but if you want to go to another level, if you want to improvise, how you can do that? Because the more and more strong your telescope is, the more and more chromatic aberration will be there. So, 
Newton came into the picture. 60 years later, Newton said, let's make some changes. Yes, I accept you are using lenses. What if I don't use a lens? What if I can still make a telescope and not use a lens? Instead, I'll use a mirror. And yes, that's where the reflecting telescopes came into picture. And today, it is the reflecting telescopes ruling the world, right? So, we all have reflecting telescopes today. But it was Newton who brought this in 1668, almost 60 years after Galileo. Now, what he did, he said no to lenses. No, no lenses. Let's not use lenses. But let's use mirrors, the spherical or curved mirrors as we call them, right? So what happens if you can use a mirror? And this is one good thing about mirror. Mirrors can be made using small, 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 small mirrors and joining them creating a big concave mirror, but this is difficult in lenses. So he said, let's make a very big concave mirror so that very far off objects, we can take the light from them and converge at a point. And that's where this huge concave mirror helped us. Nice. All right. But you know what? There's still one, one problem. I mean, you have a concave mirror like this and you are watching a planet or any star which is far off. Light from the star came to your mirror, it reflected it, it is sending back to the sky, right? It's going away. But you don't want that. You want it to come to you so that you can view an image which is big, right? Which is enlarged. How to do that? But you know what? He came up with an ingenious idea. The idea was, what if we keep a plane mirror in between? So what happens here? The light falls on the concave mirror, converges or tries to converge at a point in between there is a plane mirror and then this plane mirror reflects the light and sends it to an eyepiece and this is where you can see an enlarged image of this object right i would say clear enlarged image right okay now that's how the reflecting telescope started to work and the world started to change yes Today we see all the good telescopes we have and all of them use mirrors because no chromatic aberration, right? And you can use nicely big mirrors which are convenient to make instead of very big lenses. So that's why this is how the reflective telescopes came into picture and today we use them. We use them so much and we keep on improvising on them. True? All right. So if you liked this video, go ahead, click on the like button. And if you feel this was helpful, share it and subscribe to the channel. It's really important. And people who have missed this thing till now, the YT free code is still active, right? Go ahead. Just not, don't let the situation come that everybody has used it and you don't know about it, right? Go ahead. There's a link in the description, the shop.byjuice.com. Click on that and you can use this code for getting the package of 399, the three session package for free. Go ahead. It's important. Try it out and then decide if it's good or bad. But trying is important, nice? All right, with this, you will get two teacher advantage. You will get uh, live doubt solving. You'll get classes as per your schedule. It's pretty good. But first thing is you just need to try it. Go ahead, try it out and just keep waiting for more.